On the day of May 19th, 1780, people in New England woke up to find a shadowy fog drifting over the morning sun. Early twilight had fallen within the few hours it passed, and when noon came, the skies were already as dark as midnight. Even the animals got confused by the unexpected darkness. The night birds sang while chickens in the area retired to their roosts. People had to light candles so they could see what was around them. Since then, it's taken scientists a few centuries to eventually come up with the most probable cause of this out-of-the-world darkness. However, during that time, many Americans were bewildered by the disappearance of sunlight, fearing that the biblical end of days was already at hand. That unusual day of confusion and awe has since been commemorated as the Dark Day of 1780. Several days before the eventual dark day of May 19, 1780, people noticed some unusual activities happening in the skies that loomed over New England. At the time, the region had only just recovered from one of the coldest winters ever, and though the still and breezy air in the town warmed up, it was also very dense. During the hours of dusk and dawn, the sun had a reddish hue while the moon glowed pink in the evening. Even General George Washington, who was based with some members of his Continental Army in the neighboring New Jersey, mentioned in his diary entry that day that there were heavy and uncommon kinds of clouds, and that it was both dark as well as bright with a reddish kind of light intermixed with them. Despite these unusual signs that appeared the day before, May 19th began as a typical gloomy morning. The skies were both calm and gloomy, while light rain drizzled over some areas. People across New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut rose from their beds and headed out to their farms and towns. It wasn't until sometime between 8 and 9 in the morning that people started to notice something was not quite right with their surroundings. A bunch of reddish-orange tinted clouds rushed in from the west, blocking the rays of the early morning sun. And so, instead of glowing brighter, the skies had gotten dimmer, with a veil colored like apple cider descending over the visible heavens. The dark clouds continued to accumulate as the morning went on. By midday, the sun's disk was already obscured as a whole, and most, if not all of New England was shrouded by gloomy blackness. In order to work or eat lunch, many people were forced to do so under the glow of faint candlelight. Others could only stop and stare in amazement at what was unfolding all around them. Believing the sun had already set, cows wandered back home, while crickets and frogs started to chirp and croak. Even the flowers folded their petals as if night had already fallen. One famous scene during that day took place in the Governor's Council of Connecticut. Surprised by the unnatural darkness, a number of the politicians at the council urged the others to adjourn the meeting early. However, a councilman named Abraham Davenport, who was a militia colonel from Connecticut, was vehemently against it. He went down in history for saying the following words, The day of judgment is either approaching or it is not. If it is not, there is no cause for an adjournment. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. I wish, therefore, that candles may be brought. Moved by his words, the council agreed to proceed with the sessions for that day, working by candlelight. This action of Davenport went down in history as a very brave moment amidst great uncertainty and was later immortalized by writer John Greenleaf in his poem written in 1866. Aside from a few rays of sunlight slipping through the cloudy blackness, the dark shade almost completely covered the northeastern area for what remains of the day. That evening was regarded as one of the darkest nights to have been recorded, and people had a hard time sleeping through the night, worried that they may never see the light of day again. But to their relief, the severe darkness that covered New England disappeared the morning after. With little scientific knowledge taught among the residents of New England in 1780, it's not surprising that people were terrified of the unexpected darkness that turned day into night. And so, lacking information and sufficient explanation of the phenomenon, the majority of the population resorted to seeking comfort in their religious beliefs. Back then, the citizens residing in New England were largely followers of the Protestant faith, and they regarded natural phenomena as signs as well as indications of what God's true intentions are. Biblical phrases, particularly those written in the the book of Revelation, describing the blackening of the sun and the moon turning red as blood, led some residents of the area to conclude that Judgment Day had finally come. Witness accounts reported people roaming the streets of their towns, making loud declarations that the end of days was already happening. The fear and confusion caused by this unusual phenomenon was amplified by not having a cell phone or a means to communicate with each other very quickly. So they had no way to know for sure and right away what was actually happening and what could be the cause or the meaning behind this unexpected darkness. Plus, People also lived far away from each other, so their nearest neighbor wasn't exactly nearby. And at that time, they only really knew what was happening in their local area. The one thing these people always knew they could count on was the sun coming up every morning and staying up the whole day until setting in the evening. But this unexpected dark day made them realize that they could not always depend on this. Decades and centuries after this mystifying event, a number of theories were brought up to explain the darkness which had fallen over the region of New England that unusual day. Some of the hypotheses that attempted to explain the phenomenon 
included a thick cloud, a solar eclipse, a volcanic eruption, and a meteor strike. However, most of these hypotheses have since been ruled out to explain what really caused the dark day of 1780. For example, while a thick cloud can drop low enough to darken the surroundings, it's unlikely that this alone would be enough to cause a dark day. A solar eclipse has also been ruled out because there was no record of it occurring that day. And even then, previous cases of solar eclipses were recorded to have lasted no more than a few minutes. Volcanic activity and a meteor strike are also unlikely because there's also no record of either taking place in 1780. For more than 200 years, it seemed that New England's dark day would forever remain unsolved. However, science found the answer that finally put an end to this enduring mystery. Back in 2008, the University of Missouri released their discovery of the most plausible cause of the sudden darkness in New England on that fateful day of May 19th. The evidence they found from tree rings in Ontario, Canada, revealed that the great wildfires which took place in the year 1780 could have been the main culprit of it all. In a paper titled Fire Scars Reveal Source of New England's 1780 Dark Day, which was published in and circulated through the International Journal of Wildland Fire, scientists revealed that the fires occurring during the time in Canada were responsible for producing columns of heavy smoke which reached as high as the upper atmosphere. This smoke, along with the natural fog of the region, drastically affected the atmospheric conditions of areas which are supposedly several hundred miles away. The results of this research are further reinforced by various witness accounts they claim to have smelled the scent of ash lingering in the area. For example, geographer Jeremy Belknap of Boston wrote in his letter back in 1780 to Ebenezer Hazard that the surrounding air of where he was had the smell of a malt house or a coal kiln. The people also described how bodies of water looked like they were dirty and dark. This scientific study by the University of Missouri provided a remarkable opportunity to combine historical accounts with advanced technology, along with the physical historical evidence which were gathered from the study of tree rings. Consequently, this led to the successful solution of a long-time mystery with the help of science. The plausible explanation provided by this study would have no doubt been appreciated in news in 1780. However, due to the lack of sufficient evidence to sway them otherwise, a large number of people in the area during that period continued to hold New England's dark day with both fear and amazement. For centuries, stories of that darkened day cemented themselves in the region's popular lore, and the event has since been eternalized and is still being remembered today through a wide assortment of creative pieces of art and poetry.